Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And welcome as we gather to celebrate this Eucharist, and we are now back into ordinary time, which means that our vestments change into green. It's in the ordinary of our lives that we are invited to respond to the Lord. For the times perhaps we notice in these days that are past, we haven't responded as we could to God's call to love. Let's ask the Lord now for mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Yes. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until her vindication goes forth as brightness and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken and your land shall no more be termed desolate, but you shall be called, my delight is in her and your land married. For the Lord delights in you and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Tell among all the peoples the wonders of the Lord. Tell among all the peoples the wonders of the Lord. O oh, sing a new song to the Lord, sing to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord, bless his name. 
Tell among all the peoples the wonders of the Lord. Proclaim his salvation day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Tell among all the peoples the wonders of the Lord. Give the Lord, you families of peoples, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Tell among among all the peoples peoples the wonders wonders of the Lord. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. O tremble before him all the earth. Say to the nations, the Lord is king. He will judge the peoples in fairness. Tell Tell among among all the peoples peoples the wonders wonders of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are inspired by one and the same Spirit who apportions to each one individually as he wills. The Word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God has called us through the Gospel to obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you. There was a marriage at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus also was invited to the marriage with his disciples. When the wine failed, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, O woman, what is that to you or to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now, six stone jars were standing there for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the steward of the feast. So they took it. When the steward of the feast tasted the water, now become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first, and when people have drunk freely, then the poor wine, but you have kept the good wine until now. This, the first of his signs, Jesus did at Cana in Galilee, and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So don't let anybody ever tell you that Jesus never went to a party and never tasted any alcohol. I suspect that in that second chapter of John we've just heard, you have a pretty good argument to counter that argument. It's curious, if you listen carefully to that text, 
that we are told the wine failed. I wonder what that really means. Did they run out of wine, or was it simply just a poor quality of wine? Traditionally, we have always heard that they ran out of wine. The translation we read from now says that the wine failed. Whatever it means, this is quite an unusual gospel miracle, performed, it seems, at Mary's prompting to save the hosts of this feast from embarrassment. Notice when Jesus kind of tells his mother off, she simply turns to the servants and says, do whatever he tells you, despite the fact that he said, whose business is this that they've run out of wine? If we dig a little bit deeper into this text, it's not just simply about the embarrassment of the hosts. John wants to tell us something about who Jesus is and what Jesus can do. I wonder if John is sort of putting a menu before us. This, at the beginning of his gospel, he says, is what will happen. This is what God is capable of. So keep reading. Stay with him to see what he does. There is in both the first reading that you've just heard and the second reading, a picture painted of simply how abundant God is. God's generosity is abundant. Forgiving Israel, and in St. Paul's letter, giving us abundant gifts. And this miracle, too, is about God's abundance. I wonder if I can invite you to perhaps consider three invitations from this text that we've heard this morning. The first one is simply what has been watered down. We are told they ran out of wine. There were only jars of water available. The party would be over if there was no wine, it seems, to the host's embarrassment. But I wonder if the deeper invitation and question to us is something like, where in your own life at this time is there no energy? Where does it feel like there is no inspiration? Where does it feel like you have less faith and less confidence? Where do you feel lost? Or where do you feel robbed? Where right now is there no joy? What causes you to miss out on the party? You know, sometimes when there is a lack of something in our lives, like a lack of joy, it is helpful to dig exactly in that lack, instead of pretending it's not there, to discover what the cause of that may be. I wonder if I can invite you today to talk to Jesus, just simply as his mother does, about what is not there what is missing, where you feel that there may be some sort of loss in your own life at this point in time. The second invitation is to look at the person of Mary, Jesus' mother. Jesus acts in the gospel because Mary, his mother, prompts him to act. She calls his attention to where there is lack, where something is missing. Mary sees what Jesus does not, or perhaps cannot see at that moment in time. It's helpful for us to ask ourselves who the Marys are in our own lives, calling our attention to the lack, to what is missing in us or in our lives. Notice, too, how Jesus tells her that this is not yet his time, and yet he still does something because she prompts him to. Maybe in our own lives, we think that this is not the right time, and yet someone comes along and prompts us 
and we decide to act anyway. Can you give that serious consideration, someone might say to us? So who are the voices that speak to you, that prompt you, that you today can be grateful for because they've pushed you just simply a little bit further along the way? Maybe they have given you a new confidence to move forward, to do something, and even to make a necessary change in your life. And the third and final invitation is just simply that last line of the gospel. We are told the disciples believed in him. Just before this text, we are told, uh, just before that line, we are told that Jesus manifested his glory and then they believed in him. I wonder if that closing line tells us more about the disciples than it does about Jesus. Jesus knows who he is. Jesus changes effortlessly water into wine. Was the real miracle at Cana not just simply the change of water into wine, but rather the fact that the disciples' eyes were opened? Their acceptance of Jesus and who he is and what he can do gives them a new identity because they are associated with him. They are his followers. Do the disciples themselves not become the new wine with their newfound belief in Jesus? I wonder if we too truly believed in him, how we would see ourselves and how we would see others. Would we not be bold and confident about ourselves and the message that we carry to others and into our world? Would we not be more assertive in our fight for justice and for those who are excluded if we had that confidence? Would we not work against all that divides us? Would we not include all those who we so easily exclude in the name of religion or law? You see, when we have seen the manifest glory of Jesus, we are invited to claim our true identity if we believe in him. And then we become the new wine. Jesus offers us the opportunity to have all that is watery or water within us transformed into new wine. How open are you today to becoming that very new wine? We have heard God's word, and so I invite you now to join as we pray together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God speaks to us through the words of Scripture. And now we have an opportunity to speak our prayers to the Lord. 
And so we bring our needs and the needs of our world to God. For the church, that inspired by Mary's words, we may help others come to the Lord Jesus, who is always generously responding to anyone in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For the grace to speak to the Lord about what we feel is watered down or missing in our lives, that God, knowing what we want, would change the water in our lives into life-giving wine for us and all whom we meet. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For a spirit of gratitude, that we may appreciate the abundance of God's generosity toward us, especially through those who assist and support us. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For the deepening of our relationship with God, that we may grow in intimacy with God, the source of our life, and come to know who we really are and how we are called to live our identity rooted in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For healing of the divisions within the human family, that racism, sexism, and prejudice may cease, and that each person may be welcomed with dignity and with respect. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to violence in families, amongst neighbors, and in our streets. That God will turn hearts from violence and help all people to work together to build the city of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our country. That God will heal the divisions and animosity that exists, help leaders to work together to address the issues of those who are suffering and help us better listen to one another. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, we give you thanks that we can present these prayers to you, the prayers that we have spoken out loud, but the prayer too that rests in the heart of each person who gathers to worship you today. And we make them through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. 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 Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and Work of our human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the the praise and the glory of God's name, for our our good and the good of all the hearts in the church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, creator of the world and source of all life. For you never forsake the words, the works of your wisdom. 
but by your providence are even now at work in our midst. With mighty hand and outstretched arm, you led your people Israel through the desert. Now, as your church makes her pilgrim journey in the world, you always accompany her by the power of the Holy Spirit and lead her along the paths of time to the eternal joy of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. And so with angels and saints, we too sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You're indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more gave you thanks, and gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until so you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the cup of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Buti our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we, can, we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints. We shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art Amen. in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope 
and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With Let's take a moment now to pray for peace where we know peace is needed, perhaps in our own hearts or families, perhaps in our neighborhoods or our country. And feel free to offer those around you a sign of God's peace. And we pray together, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Body and blood of Christ, bring all of us, our family, our friends, and all people to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and in heart. 
We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God.